might we say the innards of our baby grand redone. Hmm. And so you need to come beat on it a little bit. Y'all may not have heard this story, uh, but the scrap iron quartet came to Fort Gaines one night. We had a revival and they came and sang over there and uh, John Phil was playing the piano and uh, I mean he was just beating that thing to death and all of a sudden everybody started laughing up there. And obviously he opened up a cut on his finger and that, that whole, all the ivories were red. They were crimson stained and uh, my piano player, Miss Joanna Giles, she says, you know, I'm still getting flakes of blood out from the key, between those keys. So, uh, anyway, it's, uh, we had some fun anyway. Uh, thank God for the opportunities He gives us with the family of God. You know, I was thinking about uh, what I would uh, preach this last night. And uh, these last nine days have been a little difficult for me and my family. Uh, nine days ago, uh, my dad went to bed on Saturday night and got up with uh, a large percentage of his memory gone uh, in one fell swoop. Uh, there's a lot of things that are kind of hanging in the balance right now uh, as far as, you know, his, uh, he, my mama's still alive, living, she's in bad shape, uh, he cares for her. 24 uh, 7. I, I don't know, uh, you know, what's going to happen. And uh, you might say that a lot of people look at that and they say, well, that's a pretty tough burden to bear. Well, I think everybody in here to some degree is bearing their own sets of burdens. Uh, years ago, God gave me a message that I preached over at Dykes, I think, for the first time. In a revival over there, and it's entitled Between a Rock and a Hard Place. And tonight, you may be there. You may be in that place that you characterize like old country people used to call. Uh, and I know what it is to be between a rock and a hard place. And so tonight, uh, I, I believe this is what God has for us. Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. And I'm going to begin reading in the 18th verse. Exodus 33, verse 18. Exodus 33, verse 18. Between a rock and and a hard place. And he said, Please show me your glory. And then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, You cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. The Lord said, Here's a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock, and it shall be while my glory passes by that I'll put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. And then I'll take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. By your heads as we pray. Father, we are so grateful tonight that uh, we can cling to the cross of Calvary. And there, Lord, uh, in you we have found free pardon and forgiveness of our sin. Lord, we're grateful tonight that because of the cross that we have a relationship with you, Father. And, and Lord, I, I want to thank you tonight that we have much more than eternal life in heaven when we leave this earth. But right now, Regardless of what we're facing, regardless of where we're on a mountaintop or in a valley low, we can have the peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, I'm thanking you tonight that uh, my peace and my joy are not dependent upon my circumstances. I'm so grateful, Lord, that wherever we find ourselves tonight, as long as we are in Jesus Christ, we can be peaceful and contented. And Lord, I just pray tonight for the soul that may be under the sound of my voice and they don't know which way to turn. The pain has been almost more than they can endure. The hardship more than they can stand. Father, you know exactly where they are. They feel tonight that they're between a rock and a hard place. 
And Lord, I just pray that through this message tonight, that you give them the words of encouragement that they need. That you reveal to them, Lord, things that go on in the spiritual realm that they can't see with their physical eyes. Lord, open up our hearts tonight that we might truly know uh, that you're doing wonderful work in our life, especially when we're in the cleft of the rock. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Life does indeed have its share of hardships. Matter of fact, Jesus never promised us that this life would be easy. I never promised you the proverbial rose garden, did he? Matter of fact, in this life, he said, you'll have tribulation. You'll have difficulty. And so why is it that so often we feel that everything ought to go our way? But you know, like Job sometimes, who couldn't see what was going on in the heavenlies, that there was a real battle going on between the forces of good and evil, uh, there may be things going on in the unseen realm that are centered around your life, that are centered around your family's life, and, and though you can't understand it, God has got it. He is perfectly in control, and he is working out his purpose in your life. Now, tonight, I want us to look at an old text. I want us to look at Exodus chapter 33. And in Exodus chapter 33, we find a simple request by the man of God. The man of God wanted more of God than he had previously known. He wanted to see God in a fresh way. He wanted to see God in a more intense way than he had ever known. He wanted God to show him his glory. You ever felt that way, brother or sister? You ever felt that you wanted to see the glory of God? Let me go ahead and tell you, you need to be careful what you ask for sometimes. Because God just might show you some of his glory. And it's going to be oftentimes in a way that you just weren't prepared for. I want you to know tonight that we kind of limit God. We try to put him in a box many times in, in regard to the way that he used to work in our life. You can't do that with God. Uh, you can't make a box big enough to put God in. And, and what we feel is difficulty, what we feel is painful, what we feel is treacherous on the part of a loving being toward us is oftentimes the greatest act of love that he could ever perform in our life. And so tonight, I want us to look, without further ado, uh, at this text that describes being between a rock in a hard place. Well, first of all, I want you to see the phenomenon grimly described as being between a rock and a hard place. I want you to look in the 22nd verse there of the text, and it said, So it shall be, while my glory passes by, that I'll put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Now, I find it interesting that God said, I'm going to put you in the cleft of the rock. Moses had just said, Lord, I want to see your glory. You know, I think Moses probably had in mind, you know, if God shows me his glory, he's going to take me up on a high mountaintop, and he's going to show me a, 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 an HD show beyond all others. He's going to ride it across the heavens, and I'm going to see things that I've never seen before. Perhaps he thought that God was going to take him up into heaven and give him a vision of things that man had not previously seen. I don't know what Moses thought, but I guarantee you he didn't expect what God was about to do. Because God didn't put him where he thought he was going to put him. He didn't put him in a, in, in a place of joy. He didn't put him in a place that he had expected. He didn't put him on a mountaintop. Friends, he stuck him in a hole. He stuck him between a rock and a hard place. He put him in a crack, a crevice in the rock. Now, a lot of times when God shows us his most glorious acts, he does it by putting us not on the mountaintop, as I said, but he puts us in a hole. He puts us in the cleft of the rock. You know, there's been a lot of people in the Bible that know what it's like to be between a rock and a hard place, but they had to get in the hole in the rock before they could see the best that God had to offer. You could ask the great saints of old. You can go to your Old Testament. One day we'll see them. You ever thought about that? We're going to see the great saints of old. And we can have them lined up giving testimony to the goodness and the glories of God. 
Brother Moses, what can you tell us about being between a rock and a hard place? He can say, I can remember when God took us out of Egypt and we went out into the desert. We were following that pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. We got out into the desert and we ran into the Red Sea. We had the Red Sea on one side and then all of a sudden we looked back and we had the armies of Egypt closing in on us. You talking about being between a rock and a hard place. I cried out to God. The people cried out to God. And then the glory of God was revealed when the Red Sea parted and, and we walked through on dry ground. You know, I believe that when the Bible says they went through on dry ground. I had a professor in college tell me one time, said that dry is, is not literal. I mean, you know, we can't expect that that ground was dry. So we're talking about God. That was dry ground. And they went through, and as soon as they went through, when Egypt tried to pursue the waters closed in and destroyed our enemies. Thank you, Brother Moses. What a wonderful testimony about what God can do. Well, how about Joseph? Joseph steps forward and he says, I can tell you, brothers and sisters, about being between a rock and a hard place. You know, my brothers sold me into slavery. God gave me special gift. He'd given me an ability to interpret dreams. He'd help me to see things that nobody else could see. And my brothers were jealous of me. They threw me into a pit with the intent of, of killing me. Finally, one of my brothers prevailed. They sold me into slavery. And just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, I ended up getting thrown into prison, being falsely accused. You're talking about being between a rock and a hard place. But you know, God did the strangest thing while I was in the rock and the hard place. I got to see His glory. Because he elevated me to a high, one of the highest places over the kingdom of Egypt. And I had the ability to, to call the shots. God allowed me to see things that nobody else could see. And keep people from dying during the time of famine. Mm -hmm. See, he wouldn't have been able to do that had he not ever been between a rock and a hard place. Well, how about Brother Daniel? Brother Daniel, would you come forth and testify? Oh, Daniel comes forth and he says, you want to hear stories about being between a rock and a hard place? Let me tell you about being in the lion's den. He said, they took me and I looked down, I could hear the roaring of those hungry lions. They hadn't fed those lions in three or four days. They were ready for the first new meat that they could get. And they cast me down into that pit with with, with, with those hungry lines, and I called, did the only thing I needed to do. I called on my precious Lord. Yeah. You know what he did? He shut the mouths of those lines. And when they came to look in that lion's den the next morning, those old cats, I was curled up with them. They were purring like kittens. You're talking about the glory of God. What about the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Can y'all testify about being between a hard, rock and a hard place? Yes, sir, Brother Jeff, we can tell the story. Let me tell you what happened to us. We wouldn't bow down to old Nebuchadnezzar's statue. They played the music. Everybody else bowed down, but we'd have none of it. And, and they took us and they had the, the fiery furnace heated up. Seven times hotter than before. As a matter of fact, the people were going to throw us in. The, the furnace were consumed by the fire. They put us down inside that furnace. And then suddenly we found out that there wasn't just three of us in the fire. There was another one in there. It was the Lord Jesus Christ himself walking around in the fire with us. You talk about getting to see the glory of God. You see, I had to be, we had to be in the, between a rock and a hard place to be able to ever get to see the glory of God. What about you, friend? You may be here tonight and you in the rock, between the rock and the hard place and you say, what's this got to do with the glory of God? Well, you just need to hold on. You just need to hold on because in God's providential will, He's doing some things that you don't yet understand. Almost in every case, before you can see the glory of God, you've got to endure some hardship. You've got to endure some difficulty. And if you were the one that was designing the plan, you would never put those things in. But let me tell you, God loves you more than anybody else ever could. And He'll allow things and He'll do things in your life that you never expected because He wants to stretch you beyond what you'd ever do for yourself. Y'all all right? Y'all still listening this, this evening? Now, that's the phenomenon 
of D B between a rock and a hard place. But listen to this. I want to talk about the paradox germane to being between a rock and a hard place. Now, there's a paradox here. Moses asked, Lord, show me your glory. In, in verse 18, he wants to see the, the greatness of God. He wants to see the glories of God. He asked for a positive thing, show me your glory, but God gave him a negative. God throwed him in a hole. He didn't put him in, in the glorious place. He put him in the cloud to the rock. Not in a heavenly place, but he put him in a hole. And this in response to Moses' request, I mean, I mean, to Moses' request, Lord, show me your glory. What's going on here? Well, there's a paradox involved, and I want you to see it. Now, hard pl the, the, the place we call between the rock and the hard place, if we look at it from our perspective, if we look at it as a human being being in a hole, being in a hole in a rock, First of all, it's a, a hard place. It's a hard place. Nobody wants to be there. Nobody's comfortable there. Y'all all right? We, we squirm. We complain. We're, uh, we are in pain. Uh, we let God know about it and everybody else who will listen. Well, because it's a hard place. It, it's a place that we don't enjoy. But it's not only that. It's a lonely place. You see, Moses was there by himself. You remember, there's nobody else there but him and God. And God took him and put him in a hole, and there he is with nobody else. He doesn't have Aaron there. He doesn't have Miriam there. None of the Israelites are there. It's just him and God. And listen, at the time, he can't even see God. He's in a lonely place. Well, what about you tonight? If you're between a rock and a hard place, you may feel all alone. You may feel that nobody else cares about your situation. Y'all all right? You may feel that not even God cares about where you are tonight, about your pain, about your difficulty. You feel all alone. We all know what it is to feel alone. It was not only a hard place, it was not only a lonely place, but friends, it was a dark place. It was a dark place, being in a hole of a rock. There have been some dark places that I've been in my life. But I bet you can tell about some dark places that you've been to. Places where you can see light at the end of the tunnel. Y'all all right? Places where you can see that there was going to be a positive outcome. Maybe from a doctor's report that gave little hope. Maybe it was from a, a, a loved one that has, has turned their back on you. Maybe whenever you lost your financial income, your job was terminated. It was something took place and you lost your physical assets in life. I don't know what it is, but you've probably been there, and I believe there's some people tonight that may be there right now. You're in that hard place that's so uncomfortable. You're in that lonely place where you feel that not even God cares that you're in. And you're in that dark place where you can't see light in the tunnel. But let me tell you what's going on on the other side. It may be seem hard and, and lonely and dark to you, but if you're looking at it from God's perspective, it's the place of greatest comfort because, friend, He's the one that's there tending to your needs. It's not only that, it's the place where God is closest. He's there to show you His glory. You can't see it yet, but He's there about to reveal His glory in the darkness of your situation. And listen, it's the place where the light is about to be revealed. We always say, just hold on. The, 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 the night is darkest before the morning. <clears throat> Need to hold on a little longer. Well, that is a true statement. Because if we just hold on, we're going to get to see the glory of God just like His servant Moses did. Now, that's the paradox in the whole thing. Don't we wish there wasn't a paradox there? Don't we as human beings wish that everything came just as we wanted it, but that's not the way that God works? Because God knows you and me will take the easy way out. God knows we'll take the least painful way out. 
You know, one of the things that, that, that I'm always intrigued with, and uh, it, it is becoming more and more of a subject in athletics especially, uh, and, and is used in, in many, many sports today, and, and it's the mental aspect of the game. Your mind works in an amazing way. You've got your conscious mind that is very literal and works by steps. And, and then you've got your subconscious mind that can do hundreds of different activities without you even thinking about it. But your conscious mind is always looking for ways to shorten the system. Always looking for ways to take out steps. And if you're not consciously disciplining yourself, then you come up, you, you develop more bad habits than good ones. And I, and I really believe that our old physical bodies will try sometimes to short circuit the spiritual work that God is doing because we don't like the pain. We don't like the loneliness. We don't like the hardship. We don't want to wait on God. We want to get it over with. And if we would just hold on and stay in the rock until God brings us out, then we'll be better than we've ever been for Him before. Well, let me show you a third thing. I want to show you the protection given between the rock and the hard place. This is good. Look at verse 22 again. In the last part of verse 22, He says, I'll put you in the cleft of the rock, and listen to this. I'll cover you with a sheet, with a blanket, with what? My hand. Not any hand. Not Jeff's hand. Not Judy's hand. He'll cover you with his hand. We are talking about the hand of Almighty God. He says, as I pass by, I'm going to cover you. I'm going to protect you with my hand while I pass by. Don't you think about that for just a minute. You feel alone. You feel that God has deserted you. You feel that He's nowhere close by. But while you're between a rock and a hard place, He's covering you just like He did His servant Moses. He's covering you with His own hand. God is never closer to you than He is when you're in your hardship. Never closer to you than when you're in a hole. Never closer than when you are in your darkest days. You may not be able to see him. You see, when God had his hand in front of Moses, he couldn't see anything. He didn't have any inkling about what was going on. But God was closer than he'd ever been before. Amen. You can't see what's going on. You don't understand what's happening in your life. You don't know why this pain. You don't know why this difficulty. You don't know why this hardship. But God's closer to you than He's ever been before. And He's about to do the greatest work that He's ever done in your life. If you let it. If you don't squirm out of the place where He's put you. If you stay there until He's accomplished His work. Because in the middle of the cave, in the middle of the crevice, in the middle of the hole, you're not able to see what God's up to, but God's working. Are y'all alright? God is busy while you're in the middle of the hole. He's protecting you and He's working out His purpose. He covers you with His own hand. We depend on men. We depend on finances. We, we, whenever we got money in the bank account, we rest easy, but you let things get tight and we get worried. As long as we got somebody that's on our side, we feel all right. But when everybody else turns their back on us and we start feeling alone, we get all in an anxious feeling. Listen to me. The one that matters, it doesn't matter if everybody else leaves you alone, it doesn't matter if you've got a penny in the bank. It doesn't matter what you, if you don't have your health or anything else, listen to me. If you've got Jesus Christ on your side, on your side you've got all you need. Amen. He got you covered yeah. with his hand. He's closer than he's ever been before. Let me show you one more thing. There's a perspective gleaned between a rock and a hard place. A pers or perspective gleaned between a rock and a hard place. Let me read to you verse 23. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. You'll see my back. A lot of times when we're going through the place called 
a rock in a hard place. We don't understand what's going on. We've already expressed that. We don't know that God is even doing anything. We, we cry out and say, Lord, why, where are you at? Why aren't you doing something? Lord, I, I, don't you know I can't take any more of this? Where, where are you? Why haven't you showed up? We don't understand what God is up to. Well, we can't trace his hand. We don't know where he's at at the time. We just don't know what he's up to because while God is doing his mysterious work, while he's doing his greatest work, he's got you covered with your hand, and he keeps you in the dark with regard to those things. You say, I can never see and understand what God is up to while I'm in the cleft of the rock. But you know, I can understand it pretty clearly after he's removed me from the hole, after he's taken me out of the cleft of the rock. When I look back on it, and I see it from the other side, I can see where God was in it all along. I can understand what God was up to all the time from that point of view. As long as his hand's over me while I'm in the cleft of the rock, while he's doing his greatest work in me, I can't see anything. But the moment that he moves his hand, and I, he, the Bible says I see him, I see his hind parts, I see his back, I see it from the other side, I see it from hindsight, if you will. Wow. We got two things at our house. We got one thing called hindsight, and everybody's got and the other one is hinds sight. <laughs> <laughs> hindsight is what my children call daddy's perspective on things. And, and you know, hinds, hindsight can be skewed sometimes, but listen, spiritual hindsight is a very valuable thing. Because when I look at what God has done in my past, Miss Judy said the other night about how many years she's been journaling. That is a precious, precious discipline. Because sometimes you can go get your journals when you wonder if God's going to get you through this. And you read the, the countless times over and over and over in the past years how he's come through time and time again. And you can't even find one time that he's ever failed you before. Amen. Amen. Yeah. What makes you think that he's going to suddenly give up on you right now? Yeah. You see, when he moves his hand, after he's passed by, after he's done his work, then you get to see the glorious work of God in your life. When he passes by, when he passes by, you may think you see the fleeting glimpse of his glory, but the, problem, the, the thing you need to understand is the glory of God is always there even while you're in the hole. The glory of God is there even when you can't see. The glory of God is there when you don't understand. The glory of God is there when you fail to comprehend. The glory of God is there, especially when you're between a rock and a hard place. Now, I don't know where you are tonight, but I promise you there's an old saying that if you are, are, are not, everybody's in one of these places, either you're in the middle of a trial, you've just come out of a trial, or you headed toward one. Everybody's in the same boat. Listen, this message will apply for the rest of your life because, listen, trials have come and gone before, and they'll come and go again. But don't dismiss the glory of God in the middle of your hardship because he's there. He's doing his greatest work, brother, sister, while you're in the middle of that hole, that cave. Between a rock and a hard place. Would you bow your heads as we go for the Lord? Lord, I, I just ask tonight that your children be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Lord, there, there's some here tonight that have been in the cleft of that rock for a while. They, they're hurting. Mm -hmm. They know what it is to 
to have pain. They know what it is to feel lonely. They know what it is to be in darkness. But Lord, I pray that you'd give them the faith tonight to believe that they didn't get there by accident. Lord, some of the, the greatest things that you ever do for us are not when you set us up on mountaintops, but rather when you put us in holes. Lord, I pray tonight for that person on the side of my voice that has been wondering, been questioning, been doubting if you really care. Lord, I pray for that individual tonight that you give them a glimpse of your glory. Lord, you have to understand that they're not there by accident, that you're teaching, that you're growing, that you're molded and shaping. And when they get through this, they'll look back and see themselves stronger than they've ever been before. And their faith's going to be greater than it's ever been before. Lord, I'm so grateful that whatever we go through in life, as believers, you're there for us. You are the one that is the master of our, our soul. You're the captain of this ship. And, and Lord, you're working out your perfect plan, but my greater concern is for those who don't have you on their side. And, and they stumble into holes and difficulties, and they don't have somebody working on their behalf. They don't have somebody that's going to guide them safely through. And see, friend, as long as you want to keep trusting in yourself, God's going to let you. And you'll trust yourself all the way to hell if you're not careful. Hell's a real place. And for many people, it's coming like a runaway freight train. It can't be stopped. Jesus made a way called Calvary. And on that cruel old hill, the Son of God, who took on a fleshly body and dwelt among us for 33 years, sinless, perfect Son of God, Jesus, went to Calvary's cross, didn't deserve to die, but he took our punishment upon himself. God poured out his wrath upon his Son because he was a sacrifice for my sin and yours. Friend, when he was raised from the dead three days later, he, he overcame death, hell, and the grave. He gave us victory over all those former enemies. And I'll tell you tonight, I've got the greatest offer that you'll ever receive, and I'm going to charge you a dime for it. I offer you Jesus tonight. If you'd be willing to repent of your sin and trust Jesus Christ and what he did to pay for your son on Calvary's cross, you can begin a new walk with him, a new life with him that will not end when you close your eyes in death in this world. But friend, it'll continue when you open your eyes in his presence and glory and listen, eternity is a long time. You get to spend eternity with Jesus Christ and the Father in heaven. If you know him, but if you reject him, you'll be separated and punished for eternity. Choice is yours tonight. Jesus stands at the door of your heart tonight. He, he knocks upon the door of your heart. You'll open up the door. He'll come in and he'll fellowship with you. Tonight during the temptation, Miss Judy's going to be standing up here. If you need Jesus, you need to come. Friend, if you run, you need to run. If you have to crawl, you ought to crawl because you need to get to Jesus tonight. Come and make it public. You say, I believe that somebody won't confess it before men. They're not really serious about walking with Christ. You see, it may require that you stand up for him when it may cost you your life one day. If you're not willing to stand up confessing before people that love you and love him, then you're not going to do it in a difficult world. I'm calling you to come to Jesus tonight. I want to call you to church membership tonight. You not only become a part of the family of God when you get saved, but you need a local body of believers where you can use your gifts and abilities to to serve God, to bring honor and glory to Him. And there's no better place for you to do it than right here at this church. Sister Judy would be glad to see you come. 
and unite with this church family. Maybe tonight you need to come to an altar. You just say, Lord, you know where I'm at. I'm in that hole. Help me to trust you in this place between a rock and a hard place. Help me, Lord, to, 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 to see that you're working. Even though it's dark, even though it's lonely, even though it's difficult, help me to know that you're at work. Lord, have you will your way in these moments that remain. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I come today to thank you, not for things I've ever made you here before. Not the blessings you have given, or the joy you've